Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I'm a full-time pet and wildlife portrait artist, mama, color fanatic, and to help me manage my stress this year, I've been creating art every single day, and today I'm on 159 of my 365 days of color. And in today's tutorial, we will be painting a little baby goat blowing bubblegum bubbles wearing glasses. So if you need a little color boost and you need to unwind, I promise this will do the trick. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so you can access this traceable individually in a link down below. Or if you'd like to access all my old and upcoming YouTube channel traceables, tutorials, reference photos, and material lists all in one place, distraction free, you can find this in my Dachshund class tier, which is also linked down below. Now today's creative quiet time verse comes from Psalms 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Now in the last two, two and a half months, myself and my family have seen God's goodness in a whole new way through the weird trials that we've been facing. And we don't quite know why they're all happening at once between Adam's layoff and major problems with our taxes that we had to get fixed by our tax guy, Rosie getting Lyme's disease, our children having a horrible virus that actually caused Zachary to go in the hospital, me spraining my ankle, almost tearing some ligaments and then having some teeth problems that affects me from eating. I tell you, it has been crazy. It's almost funny all the things that keep happening, but let me tell you about God's goodness coming from these trials. So first off, Adam and I are praying more together than we ever have before. We've even been able to continue saving money because of his provision through this art business, even without Adam working. And a random stranger that we have never met or seen before at church just comes up to us and hands us money, not knowing that Adam had just gotten laid off. We've now gained a friend and he prays for us and checks in on us very often to see how we're doing. And then some unexpected things I'm seeing in my own heart and mind have been changing. I've become more aware of my habit of comparing myself and I've been trying to disrupt it and stop those thoughts when they come. And the second one that has really helped me open my eyes to taste and see the goodness of the Lord is getting rid of the distractions, managing them, aka my phone. So on my phone, I've deleted the Pinterest app, YouTube app, Instagram, and Facebook. So now I can only access them when I open up my laptop. So it's a lot more effort. And that has helped me so much now putting that effort and time into creating art and worshiping and or spending time in my Bible or my devotionals. Heck, I'll be honest, I have a Bible in my bathroom. So instead of sitting on the toilet on my phone, I'm now in the word. It's all been keeping me humble, keeping me honest, and showing me how I need to make room for God and his goodness. It doesn't say see then taste. It actually says that we taste first and then we can see. I'm gonna go with my size 10 angle brush and I'm gonna mix up. This is bright aqua green with white. And because I wanna add white polka dots over top this, I don't want it to be super light but I still wanna make enough of it, so I'm gonna add in more white and more of this bright aqua green. And this is what I'll use to paint the background.
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my size two filbert brush and just white, and I'm gonna make polka dots that are about the same size behind the goat that are evenly spaced out with just white. I'm gonna try and make all these about the same size. And some of them will sit behind the goat. And you'll likely mix a little bit of your turquoise with some of this white. So like here, there'll be like a half circle. Some of it's going into the goat on the ear and then some of it's on the background. So we'll have some of that. So decide how cl closely together you wanna space them or you can have them more spaced out or you could even use a different color. You could even use a different design for your background. I wanna keep this more like a rounded design going on with the bubble and then the polka dots in the background. Steps over splinters of me.
Okay, so next brush, I'm gonna use black and my size one round brush, and I'm gonna fill in the eyes, being very careful not to rest my hand on this wet paint. Kind of comes down in the corner of the eyes on both sides. And then we'll work on that nose. So I want to mix up like a reddish, a pinkish brown. So I'm going to take some of our, I washed up my brush and I'm going to pull some fluorescent pink with some burnt umber and I think just white. Okay, that's one color. I think that's our dark color that will add to that nose. And then I'll mix up a little bit lighter pink for the bottom area. The top's kind of got a little bit of spotty browns in it. So I'm gonna mix up a lighter pink with our fluorescent pink, uh, white, and then burnt sienna. I'll add a little bit more white because I want this lighter. All right. So I'll just fill in the entire nose with this lighter pinkish brown. And then while that's wet, I will add the darker browns. So I'll go in with this darker brown. I'll even add a tiny bit more burnt umber to it. And first we have a line that comes down the center of the nose as well as a little bit kind of on the top here. It's kind of spotty browns on the top. And then after that, I'm gonna wash out my brush and go in with black just to get those little thin nostrils that we see on the bottom, just with black. I flattened out my flat brush, or my round brush actually. See how I was able to kind of flatten it out, pushing it flat on my paint palette? Now I'm just using that flat edge to fill in the sides of those little nostrils we see on the left and right side of the nose. It actually goes all the way up, but it's thickest down here. and it kind of comes in at the, at the bottom of the nose. All right, so let's work on the horns. I'm gonna mix up a gray. So the base is gonna be like a light gray with black and white. Good amount of white in there. And I'll stick my size one round brush and I'll just fill in both horns with this color. Now, if you'd like to learn how to paint your pets and or wildlife, I have what's called the Online Animal Art Masterclass. It's a relaxing, therapeutic, creative class for beginner, intermediate, and advanced level artists. And I made it so that it can be a healthy outlet for those struggling with addiction, anxiety, or depression, cancer, chronic pain, because this is the very thing that helped me through recovery and it's still something I use to manage stress. All tutorials come with the traceable and or drawing instructions within the video. You can choose from beginner level tutorials all the way through the advanced tutorials that help those who are looking to create a business in animal art. And lastly, students can collect my animal art in the stallion tier of the masterclass where I send original paintings and prints, even custom art. So if this would bless you or a friend, the link to my masterclass is down below. But guys, let's get back to painting our goat. So 
So let's let those horns dry and we'll mix up the colors for our goat here and then we'll do the bubble last. But we want to identify, I want to identify the light source, which we're getting a lot of hitting the bridge of the nose and the top of the head and more that left ear. So that's where the light source is coming from. So let's mix up our darks first and we'll start a lot of the, put a lot of those darks on the right side. So the first couple darks, I'll mix up a few. I'll mix up burnt umber with some burnt sienna. And then I'll do some burnt sienna with a little bit of our yellow oxide. You want to mix up a good amount of that. That's burnt sienna with some yellow oxide. It's getting a little bit lighter, but that's still going to be a dark value. And then for the really, really darks, I'll mix up black with burnt umber. That's black with burnt umber. So we, we have our range of dark values here. It's like dark, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. So we'll start with this color and where I see it is definitely right here behind the bubble and below that ear on the right. It's like below that cheek on this neck area of the goat. Actually, we have just a tiniest bit right here. We're going to get a shadow from the ear that it's going to come up all the way up to the side of the eye. I just have the tiniest little line. I filled in that part of the neck and it's going to come up around that ear on the top of the right ear. So it's a little bit thicker up there. All right, so I can also add this color to this side of the neck. We're getting a shadow from that ear. All right, so I think that's where, the, oh, we have just the tiniest little bit that's real dark, right on the forehead. I'm almost making like an, a V, like a filled in V, right there between the horns. All right, so that's where our very darkest darks are gonna go. I'm going to switch to a flat brush for the next, we'll use the next dark. And we might be mixing these together, by the way, little bits. So I'm just going to make sure I have a clean and damp size 6 flat brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in a little bit of this, the dark color that we were just using, with the second one that's like a little bit lighter. I'll mix those two together. And I'll add these right along the chest where we're not getting much light on this right side. using my brush vertically like this because I kind of want to make it look a little furry. This part is getting lighter, is getting some light, but not much. This is definitely getting a good amount of light. But I still want to bring this over to like about here because of that bubble creating a shadow. And I'm going to still go down like right above the edge of that canvas because I'll just want to keep that circle, keep that bubble looking like a circle. Now while that's wet, I'm going to start blending in without adding any of the darker color into it, the second one, and pulling it up along this left shoulder up to that line.
Now I'll add this lightest of our darks. I'll start adding that into the picture here. And then I'll also add some to this corner here. And I'll also add some above this shoulder. Okay, so let's leave that, the lower half, while we work on around the face where I see this lightest of our darks. So the first place I see it, and I'm actually gonna move to my filbert brush. Let's move to our filbert brush. And by the way, that was our yellow oxide. I wanna mix up some more with our burnt sienna. Yellow oxide with burnt sienna. So we have some darks that we wanna paint around both eyes. This will climb up, not all the way around the top of the eye, but up a little bit further than we have it. Just kind of climbing up and around on both sides. And then we actually have a shadow being created because it kind of goes down towards those cheeks, right along the bridge of the nose. this all the way down to the side of the mouth because those cheeks are kind of blown blown up they're gonna get a little bit more light so we're not gonna paint that with this dark value I see some of this color along the left and right sides of the head which is kind of bumpy and I'm gonna pull it in a little bit more on those bumps and join it with where we added it to the eye and we'll start working on that ear. I'll start on the left side. I'm going to come along these lines, these folds of skin that are going to have a shadow being created between them. So it's like three lines, one, two, three. This one is going along the inner edge of that ear. And on this ear, I'm gonna add some right, hugging that dark value we applied to the top of the right ear. And we actually could have added some of that dark value right along this ear. We'll go back to that color. But for now, I'm gonna see something. Let's see if we fill in the inside of it with this color. I'm gonna change up how I see these folds in the ears. I'm gonna actually apply this to the center and a little bit to the to left side of it so that we have two, two parts that are kind of lifted up. No one said you can't change the reference photo a little bit. All right, so I think that's that for this color. Now, let's move some yellow ochre. That's almost like yellow ochre, but some yellow oxide into it. Again, now we're actually working with a medium value, like our first medium value. And this is what I'll use to start painting. And is that light enough? That's not quite light enough. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of white to it. We want it to just be a little bit lighter than the previous color and not be the same value where we lose it. It can't be too close. So 
So I'll paint the white that we have on the right ear. And before I move on, I want to darken up this line so that I don't lose my colors here. So I'm going with our darkest value that we started with, with our painting. It's black and burnt umber. And I'll add some to the center of that ear, going all the way up and down the center. And coming down a little bit on the left side. And we're not gonna stop there because I'm gonna to move to my size one round brush and outline, like I said, this is dark. So we wanna outline this with this color. Now, just to recap, the color I'm using right here is where I used burnt umber with a little bit of black. All right, continuing on with this color, I can add some to this right shoulder, kind of on the back now. I'm gonna, again, need my size one round brush because it's a tiny little area. And I'll also add some, we have a highlight. If you watch me, a highlight that climbs down along the left side of the arm. I'll use that to now fill up some of that white we have left on the left side. All right, let's add some of this to the cheeks. This still isn't quite light enough. So what I'm gonna do now and mix up our next light value, which is gonna get a little bit lighter here. Add some pink into yellow oxide and some white. A good amount of white, because this is again a medium value, but I'm just trying to pull in some more pinks, a little bit more abstract colors into this goat. Fluorescent pink with yellow oxide and white. Let's try it out. Oh, I like it. That's like an orange. So let's just paint in this cheek and I'm gonna extend it out a little bit so that it goes over top that black line right here. Now I'll give you a little heads up. You wanna make sure you have enough of this color because I'll be adding it to all the leftover white we have above and below the eyes on that left cheek and a little bit too on the forehead. Now, if you watch me, I'm gonna be lifting this color up and over some of that brown, and we'll just be hugging that brown that we use to outline the left and right sides of the forehead. We'll also pull this color down, not over top that brown, but to the left and right sides of it, and I'll bring it down right where the eyes end. All right, so we'll continue using this color for the, the dark base for the lighter fur. We're gonna add lighter fur over top this. So right in the center below this darkness, I'm just gonna create like these kind of sloppy Vs overlapping one another coming down the bridge of the nose. 
All right, so here I'm gonna border that brown on the left and right sides and also make it quite a thick area that I wanna almost fill in. We're gonna be layering light fur over top and in between this color. And I can also add this color. I just barely have enough right here, a little bit dark because it's blowing up that bubble and there's a little shadow there, so it's gonna get a little darker than like the bridge of the nose of the nose. Alright, so here and the ear and the, the white we have left over are going to be really light. Okay, so I'm going to just take a break from this size one round brush and mix up a few of our light values. And you'll need some white for this. Okay, so I'm going to pull some white. I'm going to mix a couple. I'll do white with some burnt sienna. And that's a very small amount of burnt sienna. So I'll do white, yellow, and yellow oxide for one. This can be really helpful when you mix up the colors ahead of time. I'll even do a light pink with some cadmium yellow and white. even try that out as the first color for this year. Cute, that's cadmium yellow, fluorescent pink, and white. Great, and then I'll use this color right here to fill in the rest of the white on the back. And I'll even bring that down. I'm using the flat edge of my flat brush to cut into this color here and also on that highlight along the side of the body. Now I'm gonna turn my brush vertically and also very carefully apply this on the right shoulder now. All right, so Next, we're going to work with the same color on the white that we have left on the bridge of the nose and the forehead. But if you watch me, I'm going to both fill in the white and cut into that brownish peach color we just applied, but still leaving some so the, bo the bottom base is visible. We don't want to cover up all of it. We're just trying to create a little bit of that furry texture. So this is where I say I'm going to cluster lines. So I'm both clustering lines over top that base layer and filling in more of that white. Now I'll turn my brush horizontally and just carefully glide it over the top of that dark filled in V we have in between the horns. So we need a joiner color because this is real dark and that's real light. So we need colors that help us to join those two. So I think we'll utilize our yellow oxide and a fluorescent pink and even some burnt sienna. So fluorescent pink, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, and white. help just mellow out those two colors so it kind of they they work together And 
this is a great color to add some highlights on this ear. If you watch me carefully, I'm just going to apply this to the top of the right ear, highlighting those the left and right lighter areas because we have that fold in the center. Well, I'll just be applying this to the left and right of that dark line. Alright, so now for those cheeks, um, I have the next color I'll use is this Burnt CNN White. I'll outline the inside of the left cheek and just get a little bit of the top right cheek. I end up actually outlining the inside of both at the end. So if you want now, you can also take that all the way down just to save a step. Then I'll go to this white and yellow mixture and I'll add that highlight along around the eyes here. And right below the eyes. I love this color so much that I think I want to try and squeeze it into a few other areas like along the left ear. I just outline the left ear. Now I really like this color so much and it's actually a highlight that we can just scatter around the lightest parts of the goat, so that's what I do. Leaving big gaps in between, I scatter it along the forehead and the bridge of the nose and the back and the shoulders. So I want to see through the bubble just a little bit. Not very much, but a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I actually want it to be a little bit lighter because this light bubble is gonna kind of make those colors look a little bit lighter. So what I think I'll do is I'll just use burnt sienna and some yellow oxide for this darker color. Now we're just barely gonna fill in much white inside this bubble. It's gonna be real vague, but it will give the viewer the impression that this is sort of a see-through bubble. It's very thin bubble gum. So I'm not gonna fill in all the white here. I'm just gonna take it down along the neck. If you watch me, you'll see I barely fill in the middle. I'm just bringing it down vertically. And then I'll do like yellow ochre and white for this area. And we'll let that dry so that doesn't mix in with our pink when we go over it with the pink. And we'll work on those horns. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my size one flat brush or my round brush and I'm just gonna outline these horns with white.
And then I'll also take these eyelashes out. So just black. I'm gonna pull these eyelashes out. On this side, it'll kind of cut into that ear. And this side will be more into the background. And now, oh yeah, that's perfect. So now we'll mix up our colors for the bubble gum. Yummy, delicious bubble gum. We're gonna make it pink to complement that beautiful turquoise. So I'll go with my fluorescent pink and lots of white. So after I've created this real light colored pink, where you wanna make sure you have enough, we're gonna use quite a bit here. I'm not only gonna fill in the rest of the white, but I'm also gonna outline the bubble carefully. If you're finding that you're pulling in too much brown, then give it a second to dry. And then what you wanna do is just fill in the white just very loosely, you see how I'm with wide brush strokes here, I'm applying the pink on the inside, but very carefully with my flat brush outlining the entire bubble. Now for the inside, my brush strokes are gonna be more circular, and I'm also gonna just have some areas that are a bit more white, more of a light pink than the pink that we started with. See how I pulled in a little bit more white? The right side's got a little bit more white. Well, I'm just very loosely with these large brush strokes trying to create a thin layer over top that brown neck. In the meantime, let's see if we can squeeze in maybe some purples. I love purple going with all those yellows that we have in here. So I'm gonna add violet to my pink palette. And I'm gonna find some ways, some areas that I can add it to. I'm gonna mix up burnt sienna with a bit of violet and white. violet because I want this to look more purple. Hmm, where could we add this? I'm going to add a little bit on the left side of that neck because I know that this part of the neck is going to be just slightly lighter than this side. I know that this is a dark color and I can put it under this ear to outline it. Just sneaky little ways that I can add color. Now, if you remember all the areas that we added our darkest values to at the very beginning, we're kind of doing a little refresher of where those shadows are, that's where I add a lot of this purple. Now, there's a lot of this purple that I add that I end up reverting back to the brown, the original brown too. So I would recommend you watch all the way through. There are purples that I leave around the ear and around the mouth and face. So just watch me. This is exactly how I go about adding in more color to my portraits. I'm trying to match the value, not the color. So this is a darker value that I go back and apply over top some of my already dark browns. And the ones that I don't like, I just revert back to the original browns. And you don't need to mix the exact same color, just somewhere around there. I don't really like this around the eye, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna remix that brown color with burnt sienna and yellow oxide. Now mix up enough of this color because not only do I fix up some of those areas that we had purple, but I make it even better than before by adding a little bit more and softening some areas that were a little bit too dark.
And the last place I add this color is just a little bit on the lower parts of both cheeks. Just a few dabs here or there will do ya. I'm gonna make some of our fluorescent pink with more cadmium yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm not gonna add any white to it. Add some highlights to this ear. Now I'm gonna add a shadow on the upper part of the right ear using the mixture of burnt umber and burnt sienna that we made at the very beginning. So I just blend this at the very top, keeping the left and bottom area a little bit more of that medium value. So that same color to the inside of this left ear. And I also need a good color that'll help us join this light with these darks. So again, I'm gonna go in with more fluorescent pink, some cadmium yellow, and some yellow oxide. That's what I'll use. So again, that is yellow oxide, fluorescent pink, and cadmium yellow with some white. And that color we will do even looser dabs on the shoulder, on the face, on the ears. This is a medium value that we can use to add more highlights over top the dark values, but also join our real darks against our real lights, like here on the shoulder. Go back to my white and burnt sienna. Just get those cheeks. I'm going to bring it down more in this right cheek. All right, it's getting real good here, guys. We're going to make that smiley face on the bubble as well as outline it with a lighter pink of lots of white with a little bit of fluorescent pink. With my size one round brush, I'm gonna carefully outline it and then use this color with even more white actually to add a few more highlights within that bubble, especially on the lower right, and add this happy little smiley face with two little dots for the eyes and then a big gleaming, beaming, happy smile. Now to make this bubble look even more 3D and transparent, I'm gonna pull in a little bit more fluorescent pink and even some burnt sienna, just the browns that we used for the neck. And I'm gonna pull that behind the smile and just behind the left and right sides. We want the top of the bubble to be more pink, the bottom and center to be more pink. And then I'm just gonna pull in a little bit more pinks and browns right below that smile.
And the last and final thing we'll do is add our glasses. So I'm gonna just go with regular black glasses. I find the easiest way to do this is to first start where you're gonna have the connect, the like the thing that connects the glasses. I'm gonna find the center point between both eyes and then I'm gonna do a really wide C right there in between. And it doesn't really matter which side you start, you just want to create the circle around the eye. And I'm gonna have mine go pretty far over top that ear. And it's gonna go right above that poofy cheek. Just focus on the, the structure of it. Don't worry about the thickness yet. You don't have to worry about how thick or thin it needs to be. You can figure that out later. Just figure out, just try and make them as symmetrical as you can. So this goes to about here. So I'm gonna just use a little marker line to where I'm gonna stop the glasses. Now on both the left and right sides, I'm gonna create a line from behind the far left of the left lens, coming behind the eye, going underneath the ear, and I'll do the exact same thing on the right side. We just have a little notch there, it's a little bit shorter. It really helps to use like the same brush the whole time for both lenses so that you're getting that same thickness and just taking your time that really helps <laughs> when you're not rushing glasses come in all shapes sizes and colors so I really encourage you to get creative with these you can add little jewels or cool letters or whatnot on these glasses it's entirely up to you you could even use the black as the base coat and then go over it with different colors over top that. The only thing you're trying to do is just keep both lenses, both ovals or circles or whatever shape you're using, symmetrical. extend the sides out just to make it look even cuter. I'll make the sides on both lenses a little thicker. All right guys, so we have reached the end of our baby goat tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. I also hope that you feel comfortable sharing these photos. I would love to see them and how creative you got with your bubbles and your glasses. 
and your backgrounds. If you have any questions, please email me or leave them in the comment section below. Thank you again so much for watching. Bye!